In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a 24-7 live stream server for less than $10 a month. And I'm also going to show you how to connect it to YouTube so that you can have a YouTube live stream for, you know, a certain period of time or all the way up to indefinitely. And this is going to be done with something called Contabo. Let me show you here. They have prices, uh, virtual private servers starting at $6.99 a month, which is what we're going to use. So let's go ahead and see those VPS models here. Uh, I do have affiliate links in the, below, in the description below, so thank you for using those. Okay, so uh, four cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, at least 50 gigabytes of solid state drive storage, and 32 terabytes of traffic, which is very important for us in, in, a, in a live stream because we're gonna be constantly uh, sending out data. So let's select this base model and we'll, we'll configure it. So as you can see here, the monthly price of this is just $6.99. There is a setup fee if you don't commit to more than one month. You can eliminate that, eliminate that setup fee if you choose a 12-month plan. You'll see that go down to zero, and you can prepay $83 for an entire year. But since this is just a demonstration, I'm going to just do the uh, one-month uh, plan, which does incur that $6.99 setup fee. Now, depending on where you want your server to be located, which it really doesn't matter for YouTube, um, there's no additional cost to have it set up in Germany. So we're going to select that. And if you need more storage, go ahead and select the 200 gigabyte solid state drive option. You also have these other options here with NVMe memory, which is a little bit quicker than the solid state drive. Okay, for the image, you do have the option of doing a Windows server. Uh, the Windows operating system that you're most uh, familiar with probably. Um, but I'm going to select the Ubuntu server, which is free and it's included in the price. So um, if you don't know Linux, then there might be a little bit of a learning curve, but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through uh, how to set everything up in this tutorial. So we're going to select that option. And like we said, we get uh, 32 terabytes of outgoing bandwidth, which is excellent for what we're trying to do. And then you have some other optional add-ons, none of which we need in this case. So I'm going to click on next. And on this page, I will fill out my contact information and my billing information. And on this next page, you can either use PayPal or a credit card to pay with. So I'm going to enter my details here. And then finally on this page, we can review what we are ordering. And this all looks good to me. The monthly pay will, the monthly price will be $6.99 a month plus the $6.99 setup fee. So I will go ahead and order and pay. Okay, so we got a message saying, thank you for your order. The payment was received. And it usually, according to them, takes three hours to set up a VPS. Uh, in my experience, it's been a little bit less than that. But when that happens, we will get an email with our login credentials and I will catch up with you when that happens for me. Okay, guys, I got the login details. As you can see, I didn't get around to filming the rest of this video last night, but it only took 15 or 16 minutes for those login details to come in. So here's the email that Contabo sent after signing up with the receipt for the purchase and that was at 3 35 p.m and then my login credentials were at 3 51 p.m so just over 15 minutes and then where we're going to access our server is with vnc now um, there's so many different vnc servers that you can download for free i'm going to be using one that is called vnc viewer on my mac and there's also tiger vnc ultra vnc and uh, many more so pick one of those download it install it on your computer and then in here we're going to make a new connection with the ip address for the vnc and the port that's associated with that so let's put that information in here and this is going to be contabo right, we'll call it youtube live stream all right, so we'll save that and then we can connect to it by double clicking on it. And that's going to open up this window right here. And it's just saying that the, the connection is unencrypted. Uh, so anything going back and forth could potentially be uh, seen by somebody who's looking. Uh, I'm going to continue with that. Just be aware of that. And then for the password, you want the VNC password, which is right here. So we will copy and paste that in. And the thing about this Ubuntu system is it's by default, it's a it's a headless system. Um, it is called Ubuntu server. It doesn't come with a desktop environment, but we're going to set a desktop environment on here. So let's go ahead and log in. Uh, here's the credentials down here. So the username is root. 
and the password, uh, I don't know a good way, at least with this one, to paste, so I'm just gonna type that in. And you won't see anything, but when you're done typing, you can hit enter, and that should log you in as it does here to our Ubuntu terminal. So you can execute commands here, and what we're gonna do, like I said, is install a uh, a desktop environment. So the first thing we want to do with our system is update it and upgrade it. So we'll do an apt update. And when that's finished, we can do an apt upgrade. This will download an additional 76 megabytes and install 381 megabytes. So type Y, hit enter, and we'll let that do its thing. All right, now that our system is up to date, we want to install a package called task cell, and that's going to allow us to put a desktop environment on our computer. So do apt install task L, task cell. And then we need to install a display manager. So do apt install slim. Another option is uh, something called light DM, L I G H T D M. So I, I'm going to go with slim, but you can also do light DM if you have a preference for that as well. Okay. Let's execute the tasks L command T A S K S E L. And in here, we will be able to configure our Ubuntu desktop environment. So what we want to do is come down and actually you can pick any one of uh, these desktop environments, but I'm going to go with the classic Ubuntu desktop. So I'm going to go to that with my arrow keys, hit the space key, and then tab down to OK and hit enter. And this will take a bit for it to install. So we will skip forward through this part as well. All right, now that we have our Ubuntu desktop environment installed, let's do a reboot of the system by typing in reboot, hitting enter. And as the system is coming back online, you'll see that we will be able to log into a graphical user interface. So we can log in here as root, and then the same password that we had before down here, and that'll go ahead and log us into our Ubuntu desktop. Now, this is just a welcome screen. We can click through this next, next, start using Ubuntu. And if you've ne never used Ubuntu before, your uh, all your software that's installed is located over here. You can access the internet with Firefox, download additional software, and see all of your applications here. Now, one of the first things you wanna do is change the resolution. This is pretty small, so we can right-click anywhere on the desktop, go to display settings. And in here, we can see that we are using a resolution that's very low, 800 by 600. Let's crank this up to, I'm going to go with um, 1920 by 1200. So we'll apply those changes, click on keep changes, and now we have a much bigger desktop environment. And I think it's worth saying here that this color, this lagginess that we're experiencing through VNC will not be an issue in our live stream, and we'll show you that by the end of this video. So the next thing we want to do is open up the web browser, and we're going to download some software, specifically OBS Studio, and that's going to allow us to connect to YouTube to actually conduct the live stream. So go to obsproject.com slash download, and here we will find the installation instructions. So we have to install this and this. We can do that directly inside of Terminal. So let's go to Activities and search for Terminal, T-E-R-M-I-N-A-L, and click on this application right here. So there are three commands that we're going to execute. The first one is sudo apt install ffmpeg. And that'll be an extra 197 megabytes of disk space. So hit Y and enter. Okay, and when that's done, we want to execute sudo add apt repository ppa obs project slash obs studio. And then finally, we'll do sudo apt install obs dash studio. That will be an additional 295 megabytes of disk space. Type Y, hit enter. And we will fast forward through this as well. Okay, that has finished. Let's get out of Terminal, and we are done with Firefox as well, so we can get out of that. And let's open up OBS Studio by going to Activities and searching for OBS. Here's the application installed now. Let's open it up, and we'll work our way through the Auto Configuration Wizard. So go ahead and click on Next. And on this page, it's looking at our video settings, so you can use the current, which is 1920 by 1080 
I'm not sure, I haven't tested anything above this as far as resolution, but we'll start out with this. And then for frames per second, I'm not expecting this to get anywhere near 60 frames per second. So we will do 30 frames per second and click on next. And on this page, we can connect our streaming service. You could do Twitch if you're interested in that. Uh, I'm gonna do YouTube and here they recommend connecting your account. You can also uh, use a stream key. With connecting your account, you just simply log into your YouTube account. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Firefox will automatically open. And again, this uh, server is in Germany. So the language defaults to Deutsch or German. So we're gonna change the language to English just so we can see what's going on. And I'm gonna log in with my credentials now. So after signing in, OBS Studio is going to need access to your YouTube account. So go ahead and give it that permission. And now we are connected to my YouTube account. So we'll click on next. And it's gonna do its auto configuration, te test our resolution, test our specs, all our RAM, CPU, all that stuff. This, I should mention also, this uh, server that we have does not have a GPU, uh, which is a graphics processing unit, sometimes called a graphics card. Um, so that's why we are not able to get a high resolution like 4K or anything above 1080 pixels and any high frame rate like that. Okay, and based on the test, it looks like we can get an output resolution of 1280 by 720, which isn't bad at 30 frames per second. So we will apply those settings. Okay, so at this point, it is highly customizable as far as what you wanna show up on your live stream. I'm gonna do a basic um, configuration with a, a slideshow with a series of pictures. You can do an animation and I'll have some um, audio playing in the background on a loop. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, I'm gonna first actually go back into Firefox and grab some assets that I have uploaded. Um, and you can get your assets online or if you have something else, send them over to this computer. So this is at tonyteaches.tech slash live dash stream dot zip. And that should go ahead and download those assets for me. Okay, so I basically have three JPEG images and an MP3 audio file that I am going to slideshow through these images and play the music in the background. So with this uh, default scene, you could have multiple scenes, but we're just gonna use one scene, scene for now. I'm gonna go down to the sources section and add a source, and this will be an image slideshow. And I'm basically, uh, I'm gonna create a new image slideshow, and I'm gonna basically uh, point it to that directory on our, or basically our desktop, which is where these files live. And it's just gonna go through each image in that directory. So you can configure everything in here from the time between slides, which is eight seconds right now, to the transition speed, whether or not you want it to loop. And then down here at the bottom is where the image file locations will be. So uh, I'm gonna click on this plus here and point it to my desktop. And I think I will randomize the playback, check that box and click OK. And as I'm seeing a preview here in real time, everything inside this red box, I notice that the images are expanding beyond the canvas that we defined. So let's go back into the slideshow settings. And what we wanna do is configure that so it they, the full image itself shows up. So the bounding size aspect ratio, we'll change that to 1920 by 1080 click OK, and then now they will fit perfectly within the red box, which again is what we're gonna see on the live stream. Next, we're gonna add some audio on loop. And as you can see here, the, for, I guess maybe on my end, the bandwidth has picked up significantly so I can see a much clearer picture as I'm uh, logged in here via VNC. So let's go ahead and add the audio loop. We will click on the plus button here and add a media source. And this, we will create a new media source. You can call it whatever you would like. And we're gonna pick a local file, the one over here, the joint is jumping, dump in. And we will loop this. Um, any other options that we want to configure, we can, but I think all the defaults look okay. All right, I think it's finally time to start our 24 seven live stream on YouTube. So this is what we're gonna see when we go live, this slideshow of images with the audio playing in the background. So let's click on manage broadcast right here and we will call it, instead of my broadcast, we'll call it 
four seven live stream. And then feel free to add a description, categories, all this stuff. I won't waste your time on that. And then we want this to be public. And then you need to answer, is this made for kids? No, it is not made for kids. And now we can either create the broadcast or create broadcast and start streaming. Let's go ahead and do that. And now it is working, it's thinking, it's doing its thing. And we should so soon see verification that we are streaming. And we do see that we have been streaming for six seconds. Um, our CPU utilization is at 70%. We're streaming at 15, 10 to 15 frames per second, which is okay because we just have mostly static images and audio. And if we ever need to stop streaming, we can click this button right here. Now let's go over to YouTube Studio. And in here, we can click the go live button. We're not gonna make a new live stream. We're just gonna preview the existing one. And that's this one right here, the 24 seven live stream that we just set up. So let's click that. It says we have an excellent connection. Um, if people are watching this, they can comment right here. Uh, and if we want to watch it, we can listen to it right here. That's the, <laughs> that's that jazz loop that I was talking about. So again, we are, we're live for a minute and 33 seconds at this point. Um, and we have our URL that we can share with people right here. So let's copy that and take a look at this outside of this account, right? So um, let's open up a guest window. And again, this is a public live stream. So this is accessible at this link or even on the home page of your YouTube channel. So I'll show you how to look at both of those. So let's see when this loads, what this looks like. There we go. As we would expect, we got our slideshow of images playing on a loop and um, we can participate in the live, live stream comment section over here, the chat. Oh, I have to sign in. Uh, I'm not going to do that in the guest window, but I think you get the idea. And I think the more important part is that um, as long as you don't shut down or restart your Ubuntu server for whatever reason, then this live stream will continue on indefinitely as you, uh, as long as you pay your um, VPS hosting fees, right? The, the $6.99 per month fee that you have to pay in order to keep this up and running. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, I've tested this out for the past month and I have this other live stream, which I'll show you right here. That's been going for quite a while. And in total over the past month, it has sent one terabyte of data. So that's why it is important to have uh, such a, a large bandwidth allocation when you choose a live stream hosting server. That's about it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.